Hey there! Thank you for clicking that thumbnail. That was really kind of you. My name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe and a game called Once Upon a Coma. Both games are on pretty much every platform you can think of, including Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PS4, Steam, whatever. Coma is coming out in a month, guys, so click below to wishlist. Also, support on Patreon if you want. It would really mean a lot to me. What if I told you guys there was a magic wand that could make your game look 100 times better in like 10 seconds? Well, it's real. It actually exists. It is literally as simple as waving, waving a wand. Let's go ahead and jump into Unity and I wanna show you how to do it. Before we talk about this amazing little secret you can do for your game to make it look amazing, I wanna talk about an amazing company. We're gonna talk about our sponsor, NordVPN. They really are an incredible VPN service. They do a ton of amazing things. They have a great deal for you guys. But I think the most important thing is, this is you. This is the evils of the internet, people who wanna steal your content, steal your data. And this is just the internet. And this is NordVPN. Did that make sense? NordVPN's... <laughs> NordVPN wants to protect you. They can protect you from people who want to steal you and all of your stuff that you're putting on the internet. Also, they do some pretty cool things, including super fast servers. You can unlock Netflix and your favorite entertainment website. 30 day money back guarantee. You can protect data while traveling in public and that's airports and coffee shops. Cybersecurity, no data logging, 24 seven customer support. It even works in China. Up to six simultaneous connections and double data encryption. You can't beat that, or can you? I think they just did. Oh, wow, 70% off. 70 freaking percent off of NordVPN. That's really cheap. Is that right? Yeah, $3.49 a month. Oh, and you get a free month using my name, this guy, Thomas Brush. Click the link in the description. Get a good deal. I mean, that you really can't beat that. Thanks, NordVPN. All right, so if you take a look at our little scene here, there's not a whole lot going on that's exciting <laughs> it's pretty bland just a really quick scene we threw together um, so let me show you how you can make this look an infinite times better than it does really quickly so the first thing you're gonna want to do is go to the asset store and type in the search box post processing so let's just import the post-processing stack and it's free. So you'll need to download it first and then you'll import it. Let's just import every single thing here. All right guys, all of the post-processing effects were imported into our project file. So really quick, it doesn't take long. What we're gonna do is the first thing we're gonna do is create a new post-processing profile. And basically what a post-processing profile is, is it's going to tell our camera what kind of post-processing effects we want to use for this particular scene. So let's name our profile what this scene is. So let's do forest level, something like that. So right away you can see that the post-processing profile was created and it includes all of these different image effects and these are effects that are going to be put on your camera. A really good way to think about this is it's basically like an Instagram filter and you can filter all of the imperfections out of your image, just like you do uh, with your selfies. And so here are all of our effects. Before we can actually get them to work on our camera, we need to go to our camera. So in this case, our camera is actually on our first person character. We're going to add a post-processing behavior. So now all we do is drag which profile we want to use into this camera. So if we had 10 different profiles, we could actually um, drag and drop them on different cameras and different levels and then if you wanted to change the post-processing image effects if you wanted to change that Instagram filter for each one of your levels you wouldn't have to go to your levels and change them individually uh, you would actually just change them in the profiles so let's drag this forest level profile into the post-processing behavior blah 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 that's a lot to say um, let's drag that here good so nothing's happened that's okay so the first thing that's going to make your game look super professional is ambient occlusion. Now you can do ambient occlusion with baked lighting, but I prefer to do it with just the mixed real-time lighting, especially when I'm in development because baked lighting takes a long time to actually bake. So we're just gonna put that on really quickly. 
And so you can see what it did. See how it's adding shadows below the grass? It's also adding shadows to any edge or vertice for our polygons in our 3D models. So it adds a realistic shadow to pretty much every edge in your 3D model. And it does it real time, and it's not really hurting the CPU or the GPU. Um, so that's pretty cool, and we can adjust the intensity if we want, but I think it looks good right about there. Let's also put on some motion blur. Motion blur is really gonna make your uh, game look cinematic. Um, and you can do this for 2D games, you can put do it for 3D games. See if I move the camera like this, there's a bit of a blur. It's really cool. And let me show you what it looks like without. So let's do this really quick. Shake the camera like that. And then if I turn it off, it kind of looks like an N64 game, doesn't it? Kind of like we're playing James Bond. So just adding a little bit of motion blur makes your game feel uh, modern and professional. All right, the next thing I love to add is just a tiny little bit of bloom. So if we turn our bloom on, and what we're gonna do is increase the intensity just so you can see what it looks like here. So you can see the water's now shining. Isn't that beautiful? And you can see even some sun over in the horizon is peeking through those mountains. Now if you want to, you can actually increase, change the threshold so that it's really bright. Um, if we hit play here, you can see it's almost like we're in a dream world. So if any of you have ever wondered how games make this effect happen, how they make things look dreamy, it's just by adding some bloom. So I don't know, let's say this game is kind of like a, a dream world. I think this looks kind of pretty. So let's hit play and see how everything looks so far. Pretty cool. Things are looking a little bit better. My favorite one is the color grading. This is where it's gonna get really filmic um, and make the game look really special. So let's turn that on, and then we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Filmic. So you can see the Filmic look has added a lot of contrast to our image. Um, it looks kind of cool, but it's a little bit dark, so I'm gonna turn Filmic off. If it looks good for you, then go for it, but I'm gonna do none here. But what I'm gonna do is actually increase the temperature just a bit, warm it up, and then hit it with a little bit of contrast. Just like that. I think what I want to do is bring the blue down just a little so that it makes the sky look kind of teal. See that? So here's what it looks like with it off. And here's what it looks like on. So as you can see, it's kind of like adding an Instagram filter to your game, like I said before. So far, it looks pretty cool. I kind of like it. So let's exit play mode. And let's also do a little bit of a vignette. And this is just going to add a little bit of darkness around the frame and make it look a little bit moodier. There we go. And you'll see a lot of games do this, whether it's a 2D game or a 3D game, they add a little bit of a vignette to make things look a little more cinematic. So far it looks pretty cool. And another one we can do that makes me really excited is the grain here. You can turn the grain on and what the grain does is it makes it look like it's a, a film. So you can decrease the intensity and I don't like the colored grain. That makes it look like it's a VHS. So we'll turn off colored so it looks more like an old school film. And you probably can't see it in the actual video. So let's increase it to about this so you guys get the idea of what it looks like. So that's pretty interesting, right? Um, adding some grain to your image. And obviously guys, this is just to show you what it looks like. Um, but you can be really subtle with a lot of these details here. So let's bring that down obviously just a bit. We go and there's a couple more that actually really help your game that I'll briefly go over but I don't typically use them um, anti-aliasing you can turn that on and it basically makes the edges not so pixelated so you can definitely see it in the trees there so it adds a little bit of smoothing to the edges of all of your polygons and your billboard PNGs I'm gonna keep that off though. Another one you can do is depth of field. So you can actually add some blur to the distance. There we go. So it makes things look a lot more uh, moody and dramatic. So you can see it's blurry in the background here and really crisp in the foreground. And this is again gonna make your game look very dreamy, very indie, I think is a, is a good word. A lot of indie games do this kind of effect. So you can see it's really blurry. Or guys, you know, if you were playing a first person shooter um, and you were aiming down the barrel of the gun, you could actually use some depth of field as well. 
So one final note I want to say about these post-processing effects. In my experience, and I've, I've uh, got two games on Nintendo Switch now and Xbox and PS4. In my experience, um, consoles differ in terms of performance when you have these post-processing effects on. So PS4 and Xbox, we didn't really see a frame rate drop when we used these kinds of effects on Once Upon a Coma, but we definitely did see a drop um, from like 60 frames per second to like 30 frames per second when we used certain image effects. Certain things like noise, for example, uh, I don't know why, but they, they slowed our game down. Um, and also the bloom and vignette hurt performance as well. So just be really careful with these image effects. Don't rely on them. If your game looks like complete garbage without them, I would consider trying to fix your game first before adding on this polish. All right guys, what did you think? Pretty cool, right? It's amazing what you can accomplish in 10 seconds inside of, I know it wasn't 10 seconds, that was like 15 minutes, whatever. 15 minutes inside of Unity, you can make your game look a thousand times better, make it look more professional. This could be the difference in pitching your game to a publisher, or it could be the difference in pitching your game on Kickstarter, or just getting good reviews on Steam. Adding that little bit of polish makes a world of difference. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a comment, I'll try and answer as best as I can. Also, hit the notification bell. Also, finally, you can get your name in the credits of this video or the next video if you support on Patreon. Get a free copy of Pinstripe, which is a game that I made. Uh, you can see all sorts of cool behind the scenes footage for the games that I'm making. There's a ton of goodies on Patreon, so please click the link in the description. Also guys, don't forget about NordVPN. And they're the reason that I made this video, or they're one of the reasons I made this video. So click below if you wanna get a super good deal with NordVPN.